Hey guys, Clue here, coming at you with another episode of PC Building Simulator 2. And in this one, we are going to be doing something a bit different, taking a step back from uh, jobs and uh, hopefully having a little bit of fun. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is the how the game handles different CPU cooling solutions, seeing if there is actually uh, any sort of difference between whether I spend $10 on a small little air cooler or whether I spend a thousand dollars on a custom cooling loop so we're gonna check that out today and I'm gonna be honest with you guys I actually have <laughs> recorded this whole thing once before and OBS messed up and uh, yeah it didn't save anything I recorded properly so uh, I actually had to take a couple days of break because it uh, ticked me off a little bit and I uh, didn't feel like just recording it back to back again so I'd cool off so uh, back here doing it again but uh, yep actually kind of uh, forgot some of the stuff from the last one so we're still gonna be still gonna be fresh so all right so I already got uh, four PCs lined up here with some different uh, cooling solutions for the CPUs and the cases are all, uh, the PCs are all the same other than the CPU cooling solution. So we could do uh, just testing that specifically. And there are some extra components in here that we don't really need like four M.2s in each one because I plan on selling them after at the end. So we make some money in our shop. They are good CPU, they are good computers as you can see. Uh, we'll go over the spec list here. They all are built in the Corsair Obsidian Series 1000D case. They got the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Extreme motherboard. We're all cruising with the 7950X from AMD, new processor. Um, we'll skip the cooler for now. We have the Cooler Master, Master Watt Maker 1200 MIJ uh, power supply, so we don't have to worry about uh, power. We're rocking uh, four sticks of 16 gig, uh, 6400 megahertz DDR5 RAM from T Team Group. Um, they all have the RTX 4090 uh, Founders Edition that's in the game. And they all have uh, four of these uh, Team Group Cardea Zero uh, 4 terabyte M.2s. And you know, these are, like I said, some of the stuff with the most doesn't really affect the test or not really needed for the test but just to just help sell price resell price whenever we sell it so here we start out on this first one with the 24 dollars amd wraith prism um in real life pretty sure you're not gonna want to can't really use this on your 7950x uh, but we are going to use it here Actually, I already got the computer started up. We open up OCCT here. We see that the PC is running at 71 degrees, uh, or the CPU is. Um, so let's go to our, oh, weird. We're gonna go to our next PC over here. Same exact one, except this one has the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. This is a almost $200 air cooler, in-game $200. I'm not sure what it is in real life. But this is like top of the line air cooler. It's got four fans, but this is top of the line for in-game. So let's check this out. See how it's going. So it is uh, in the 69 degree area. So we're looking at a just, you know, stock, just sitting here ambient. Um, we're running two degrees cooler, roughly almost two degrees cooler with this nice air cooler compared to the cheap one. So on this one, we have the, uh, Kraken, uh, Z, I mean, Z73 from the ZXT. Uh, it is the most expensive, uh, AIO in the game. And from... Actually, from the first time I did this video, I was very surprised. So you're going to miss that reaction. But 
um, I realize that the, the LCD on this doesn't actually tell you the correct temperature for the CPU. Or I'm assuming it doesn't because it doesn't match up with o OCCT. Because uh, in OCCT, we got a CPU temp of 69 degrees. So very, very similar um, to the uh, Ice Giant one, air cooler. But yeah, this shows 66 degrees, and maybe it always shows 66 degrees. I actually haven't noticed that it shows anything else. But yeah, but 69, so roughly the same. Uh, and then we will go in here. And we have... Oh, I'm missing some stuff. Sorry. I had to redo some things here. Because actually we're going to take a look at... Um, I guess spoilers, we're going to take a look at how different amounts of radiators in the custom loop affect it. You know, definitely. Definitely a big deal. And I guess I forgot to restart the PC too. But anyway, for this we have a Raisin Tech uh, CPU block. Um, Raisin Tech uh, 360 RAD. And I believe it's an Alpha Cool um, Pump Reservoir. Yep, Alpha Cool. So let's go over here. And so just sitting here, we're running 68. So probably maybe, you know, roughly a degree cooler with our one rad than, uh, than with our ice giant and with our Kraken. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to remember that. We'll try to remember to look at the difference whenever we're going to do a little bit more before I add in more radiators in this. So, but for right now, we got a one degree difference and a three degree up, up uh, three degrees on the uh, rate prism. However, you know, what really matters is what it's going to do whenever you are under load. So let's take a bit, look at Cinebench here and see how Cinebench is going to affect this uh, CPU temp. Actually, I didn't try this before. No, I'm just going to run it and switch uh, windows here. Run Cinebench. So, oh, so running Cinebench, we got up to 93 degrees and a pretty big, uh, pretty big increase over our normalized temperatures, 71. Let's see how the Ice Giant uh, performs under Cinebench load. All right. Oh, so we're looking at 91. So while we were two degrees cooler um, under normal, we're, uh, I guess we're also two degrees under under load with Cinebench. So it's interesting. Let's go to our AIO over here. Run Cinebench. Oh, and with our AIO, it doesn't get above 78 degrees. So while just uh, when you're not under load, while the temperature may be the same as the Ice Giant air cooler, as soon as we put, put a load on it, this handles it a lot better. So now we're looking at, uh, what about that 13 degree difference under load? So awesome, good performance for the AIO. Let's see how that in turn works out for our custom loop, which is also a 360 rad. Hmm. Then a bench. Oh, well, and as you can see, 84 degrees. So that's hotter, hotter under load than our AIO. I don't know, you know, maybe this radiator isn't i guess it's not programmed for as much uh cooling power as the aio is but you know with just the 1360 rad we have a better better cooling performance out of the aio let's see how we can change that we are gonna do a quick and dirty uh addition here Empty loop. Quick and dirty addition here of another radiator. 
no offense. I played PC Building Simulator now. So remember what all I'm doing here. That in. Get our pipes in real quick here. Get our coolant back in. So, dust filter back in, and we gotta wait for wait for the coolant. Always fun. Beautiful shot while we're waiting. Can't wait. Hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to update these boxes to some newer graphics cards. All right, we are good. Starter back up. With CCT. All right, so I think we were 68 before. So with the added rad, we are still at 68 degrees. So that did not help. Did not help this temperature at all. Let's see if anything happens here with uh, running Cinebench. Ah, and interestingly enough, the temperature did not move it hardly at all. Pretty much say that it, I mean, it's within air. So, liter, like, literally with the two rads now, we see no, like, didn't hurt our, or for, hurt our thermals at all when running Cinebench. So, that seems to feel like that is pretty crazy, pretty good performance. Um, let's run that again. Yeah, again, doesn't move the needle. See if OCCT does anything to it. We're running a test on OCCT. Yeah, we're pulling more power. Pull more power. This, uh, yeah, the CPU temp is just holding strong. Holding strong. So, yeah. So put two 360 rads on your uh, 7950X on PC Building Simulator 2 and you got, got no problems. So next, let us test how overclocking affects this. And uh, just going to go into the BIOS here. We're just going to give it two base clock. Five volts. See how this affects it. As you remember, if you remember, we already were up in the 90s. Um, running Cinebench. Let's see here. Still in the 71s. Now without a load. Put a load on it. Oh, blue screen. So you can see, not able to really do much overclocking here, if at all, on this. On uh, the Wraith Prism. Let's see if the let's see if the Ice Giant can handle a little bit of overclocking on the CPU. Run this here. Oh no, blue screen. So the while it may have matched under no load. May have matched the uh, AIO. Definitely couldn't handle couldn't handle a little bit of overclock. Now let's go in with this AIO. Let's go here. Same thing. See if we have better luck. Of course, this did much better running Cinebench. We were only at a temperature of 78 degrees originally so we'll see how much this makes it go up still actually uh actually ran cooler than our non hmm. interesting we'll have to do come back let's go ahead and see how this does real quick i think we're gonna have to apply a bigger bigger overclock and see how we do. 
ahead and do this, see if there's any change from just holding steady at 68. This. Yep, and we're good. All right, so let's. All right, let's go back. Start testing on this one first, because I do have the suspicion that we're going to be able to get much higher on the uh, custom water cold one. Can we do 105 base clock? Let's try it out. Okay. Right here. Oh, blue screen. Let's go ahead and try increasing the voltage before we give up. Or before we. We'll stop at 1.65. Let's see if that is enough to keep it. Oh, yeah. Yep, putting up to 1.65 did wonders. Of course, actually, only 76 degrees. So let us increase the base clock more and just see how. Uh, probably not. Maybe. We'll see. We will see if we can do a 108. What's 108? That's a hundred and eight percent overclock. What do we got here? Oh no, uh, blue screen. Let's take it down by one. See if we can do that. One. See how this works. Oh no, blue screen. Take it down one more. Let's see if it can do this. Very interesting because it didn't, uh, temperature didn't jump at all. And we are having problems. Huh. I messed something up. I'm definitely not a technical wizard by any means of. Let me stretch of the imagination. Let's go back to this. Might have something to do with my settings, but I think my tests are still accurate for how well the different cooling solution. See, that is so weird that it doesn't like get closer to. Huh. Okay, we will go with that though. We'll see if we can. We'll see what happens with the custom cooling option here. Five. Maybe a voltage thing. Let's just see how this does with the same. Oh, well, let's see. That's odd. I wonder. Yeah, maybe I did. Mess up, I'm not really an expert on overclocking. Let's uh, see what this does. Hmm. Oh, that might be a problem with the, I mean, the CPU. They may be, because I'm pretty sure that you can bin CPUs in this game. Um, okay. So actually, let uh, me uh, take a little break here, and I'm going to switch over the CPU from that system into this one, see if I can get the same overclock in it, and I will bring you guys back when I got it in. All right, guys, we're back and changing the CPU had no difference. So, um, yeah, if anybody is an expert, I know, I guess you could say I know just enough to be dangerous. So if anybody has any theories um, 
about why this did so much better um, until, but actually this one was able to overclock higher than, than the custom water cold one. Anybody has any answers to that? Let me know in the comments, but we're going to go ahead and proceed. So we're going to see just how much uh, the fans can affect the temperature of the case. We're just going to go to performance mode on all these. Um, first, let's get, a, let's get a baseline again here. Remember this. So our custom water-cooled PC, we're hanging out at 68. It's actually not very exciting. So can we go to, let's see if we can go to echo mode. See if that affects, it's definitely affecting our um, just ambient temperatures inside the case and stuff, but see how much it really affects, or if using echo mode will affect our performance run in Cinebench. So nope, still just hold steady at 68 degrees, so. That is interesting. Let's see if it affects. Let's go back to like the Wraith Prism, which was already a problem. Take off the overclock. Uh, is that 135? So. Yep, we're back to 71 there. We run it. Get up to 93. Uh, what happens on this if we run OCCT? Does it still sit stable? Oh, it's going to run. Oh, Get up to 94. Looks like it's going to it's going to be stable. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the fan control and let's put it on echo mode and see if it can handle it. Echo mode. Okay, so we got the fans on echo mode. Oh, our, even with that, without doing anything, our temperature shot up by six degrees on the CPU, so we may not be able to handle this. Um, let's just go ahead and use OCCT instead of Cinebench here. Let's see how. Huh? Um, well, it actually seems like it's still going to hold. Interesting. Oh, did it? Yep. Thought it might. I thought it was going to spike up there for a second at the end, but no. Did admirably. So you can run the phone. So let's see if performance mode has an effect. If we can. See if maybe. Oh, so yeah, so we went down without any load. We went down almost 10 degrees so let's see um i still oh well it might be a degree cooler under load maybe two degrees from echo to performance so you get a little bit of performance there for for that let's go over here and check this out This back down. All right. Let's get our fans. Let's go performance. We kind of get an idea here. I don't want to make this too long and boring for you guys. We're just gonna see see if all those ice giant fans running have any effect. Um, yeah, a little bit, not too much, not too much. All right, we'll call that one good. Just kind of want to see, can we got the overclock on this one, don't we? 
take off the overclock? Do I want to? Eh, let's just leave it. This kind of might be our last test that we do. I don't want to make this too long and long and drawn out. We already kind of got conclusions here, so let's just let's just compare if you know increasing our the fans on our rad here if this really makes a difference. Oh, actually, the already took off the overclock on this, so we're good. So 78 degrees. So let's put our fans in performance. Let's see if we can get some closer performance to what our uh, custom cooling loop. So yeah, it looks like the max here is going to be 72, so we actually improved it by 6 degrees, and we're actually, I mean, we're not we're not far over where we are without load, so that is awesome. I guess we should go ahead and check out, well, this one doesn't really go up. Let's see here. Yeah, so this one isn't really exciting because it already doesn't move. So we did echo mode, echo mode. Yeah, it still doesn't move. Even with all the echo mode. Did I already do this? I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so, so we can see that um, liquid cooling is definitely the way to go over air cooling. Just kind of like, I mean, just like real life. So the game definitely, definitely is handling things similar, similarly. Also, the Kraken is a very good AIO, especially if you're just doing one rad in a build. Uh, you, I mean, you're just as well off. Like with just the one rad, you were better off actually using the Kraken than, than the uh, Ration Tech stuff. Which I guess in the future, in the future maybe we'll do some, you know, comparisons, kind of like uh, reviews in real life, and see if you know compare the Parisian Tech uh, custom loop to uh, an Alpha Cool one or to an EKWB one or Corsair. Just you know, test the different brands, see what kind of differences we get there. But yeah, that was a fun little experiment. And we can go ahead and put these PCs up for sale now and make a pretty, pretty penny. So let's name this. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to name it. These are our test PCs. And I can get. I already forgot. I already forgot how to do this. It's 50% more, so 10.5. You're looking at like 31.800, maybe. Yep. 31.800. I'm definitely going to make over $100,000 off of these. Let's go here. This one, we'll just do the same test. What did I say? I don't even remember what the last one was. 32, 8. Oh. Fine. Fine. That's weird. Wait, did I pick up the Ice Giant one first? No. How was the AMD Wraith Prism? Oh, no. I put it for the same. Never mind. For some reason, I thought that first one was 32, 8, not 31, 8. So, yeah. Oh, we're good. Nothing weird. I'm just losing my mind. I'm pretty tired. Pretty been a pretty long day. Didn't get really to talk as much throughout this episode because we we're busy researching, but uh, definitely didn't have much sleep last night and then had a long day at work. But I am very happy to be here with you guys. Oh, Thirty two. Yeah, we're good. We don't need to make the absolute most amount of money. Oh, and 
close you up here. We might, uh, um, and this one would be like 12, almost 37. No, just a little bit lower. 36.5. All right. So we have a lot of dollars waiting to sell in our shop. And when we come back in the next episode, we'll be able to get back into our jobs and what stinks. Right. right we could just save this. I'll probably talk about it at the beginning of the next episode. But we uh, a couple episodes ago, we lost our five bongo rating. We're still trying to get back, that back up. So hopefully we can get it back up before this job expires because this is a pretty good, pretty good job. It will be fun to do. But anyway, that is something to worry about for the next time. Again, we're at level 20, making our way to level 30. And we're going to have more fun episodes like this. Uh, review episodes, fun with um, experimentation, you know, just anything you guys want to see. Um, anything you're interested in uh, doing together, put it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like the video and subscribe. Helps out. And I will catch you in the next one.